Hi, I'm Bethany, your Lieutenant Governor of Delaware. We all know that our construction industry is so critical. It's the backbone to our economy. It's really important to me, uh, not only as a professor of nursing, but as your Lieutenant Governor, that all construction sites use PPE, protective measures, have safety measures in place. And it's really critical to our industry that we stay active and robust. The jobs that you all create really spur for our future economy and are critical to the infrastructure in the state of Delaware. So I wanna start by thanking you and the DCA and all your members for all that you do to contribute to our community while you're upholding the mission of the DCA. You really are an important part and a major player in the role of public policy in our state to be that strong foothold in our economic sector. So you being healthy uh, is really important right now, especially at home or on the work site as we in the state fight and defend against the coronavirus 19. You all have heard it many times, washing our hands, with soap and warm water, 30 seconds, social distancing of six feet, which I know is a little hard in the work site, and also things that we can do with working together, how we transfer with one another, our transportation, also how we don't go to work when we're sick. And we're gonna hear from my good friend and my partner in the community, Dr. Gibney, in a few moments, who's gonna be able to share with you some of the things she's learned not only with her work in an emergency department, but also what we've learned on the streets during this coronavirus and why it is so important that you have PPE and social distancing. So it's my honor uh, and privilege today to bring forward my good friend who serves with me on the Healthcare, the Behavioral Health Consortium as our Access and Community Treatment Chair and who's been out in the field and who's been out working with me. So at this time, I'm gonna turn it to Dr. Gibney and we're just gonna have a brief conversation to those of you at the DCA to answer some of your health questions. So Sandy, can you share with me uh, what you would say to those of our friends at the DCA and the construction field, what is it that they can do from, to prevent getting sick with the coronavirus? Hi, Bethany, it's an honor to be with you today and I thank you so much for your leadership as we navigate through this health crisis, something that we've never seen in my 26 years as a physician and as an emergency physician, but your leadership has been magnificent for us. Um, I think as a doctor, uh, some of the things that it's important for, for you all folks to, to know is that there is an asymptomatic phase that can occur with this virus. So you feel fine, you look fine to everyone, but yet, a day or so before you get sick, you can actually shed the virus and be contagious to other people at your work site. So that's why social distancing or what we call physical distancing as well of at least six feet, which seems a long way to be talking to someone from six feet away. It's like hollering at someone. We're used to being a couple of feet together. But that's very important because when we cough or sneeze, um, the viral particles are shed out of our mouth and nose and they can travel in the air with air droplets for about six feet. So we know that distance is the distance that kind of protects you because we know this virus enters your body through the nose and through the mouth. So we tell people, you know, keep that distance of at least six feet if you can. And that's why it's important as well to wear facial covering because that facial covering will protect another individual from your cough and sneeze. So you'll see people with a mask similar to this. And that is basically allowing me to cough into my mask, not into your mouth and your nose. And that's an important piece. Also, um, we do know that how does it get into your nose and your mouth if you don't have it come through air droplets? What it does is it gets on your hands and we all do this all the time. We all touch our nose, we all touch our mouth. It's a natural extension to do this, right? So be more cognizant of how many times you touch your face. And oftentimes just having this mask on protects you from touching your nose and touching your face and allowing viral particles. Because what's unique about this virus in a sense, besides the fact that you can carry it for a day or so without symptoms, is that it can live on surfaces for a brief period of time. We think that it's actually infected for maybe a to a day or so. So to know that when you're at your office or your place of business, to be very concerned about keeping your surfaces clean. Typically we use either a sanit wipe or sanitizer. There's some other products that are out there that can be used 
you can use isopropyl alcohol or a hand sanitizer. There's wipes that you can wipe down your surfaces. Make sure you wipe down your phone, close contact with your face. Um, we also know that there is an airborne phase. There's droplets in the air that this virus can hang on to and, and penetrate in your airspace. So that's why it's important if you have someone in the office, not only have them have a mask on, but try to cut any kind of back and forth people coming in and out of your office. Because if they cough or sneeze or breathe heavily in your airspace, then that can kind of contaminate the airspace around your office. So we like to have people kind of, if you have, if you have one office worker, kind of keep everyone else remote if possible and not let them in and out. And, and finally, um, some of the symptoms and um, another thing that's very important is at the job site, how do you relieve yourself when you have to use the bathroom, right? Sometimes you're using a porta potty or whatever's available. So it's important um, if you don't have access to, to soap and water, which is ideal, a 20 second hand wash. And remember, it's not so much the soap, it's the friction. It's rubbing the virus off of your hands. That's very important. Whether you use soap and water or you use a hand sanitizer, what you're doing is you're creating a friction and you're taking those viral particles and you're rubbing them off your hands. So people try to get the hand sanitizer off. No, rub your hands, use a lot of friction, get between your fingers. Okay. And that's very important. You don't reuse gloves. You see people in there, they have a set of gloves on they think they're protecting themselves. You can't reuse them because the virus will live on the glove. The glove is only good as, as if one contact, and then you need to either sanitize the gloves or change them as well. Some of the symptoms that are common that you've heard as a doc, the most common symptoms when people come to the emergency room, they have a cough, they have a fever, and they can't breathe. Right? Those are the three big features. If you have any of those, you need to contact either your physician. And if you don't have a Um, and you can get on the website and someone can direct you through that. Um, but your primary care physician should be your first call. And if you don't have a primary care physician, then you can call either the um, number for your local emergency room and we'll be happy to talk you through what needs to be done. But those three symptoms and then the other ones that are less common but you can be aware of is that you have body aches, you just feel sick. Um, sometimes you have a scratchy throat. Um, also, you might lose your sense of smell or your sense of taste, um, and, and occasionally uh, we'll see other uh, late features um, like, like chest pain or diarrhea. So this can act and behave, um, and so you have to be aware of that. And most importantly is keep that social distance because we don't know if someone's in that asymptomatic phase. They don't know they're sick, and they cough or breathe your airspace or breathe on you. Um, and so that, that's in really important for, for you to know. And then at your, at your web uh, job site, make sure that the handles to the bathroom, the handles to the porta potty, do something to sanitize them on an hourly basis or before or after you use it. And if you do have to use a porta potty, have something available there, either a 70% hand sanitizer solution like Corel or any of the other ones that are out on the market, it's isopropyl or ethyl alcohol. And finally, uh, if you're concerned about your airspace in your office, you can create a fine mist by using a spray, just like a Windex sprayer. And what we do is we have you put isopropyl alcohol, like rubbing alcohol that you would get, um, that people used to rub on their bodies. That's why it was called rubbing alcohol to break, break fever. Or you can use peroxide, that brown bottle that you see at your dollar store and cut that half. So half the bottle of peroxide with half water, put it in a spray gun and it creates a fine mist. And so that fine mist then kills the viral particles that are in the air. So I can't, I can't breathe them. Um, so you can sanitize your office space, not only the surfaces, but also the air with that sanitizer. And remember to wash your hands with vigor and aggressiveness to get the viral particles off your hands. Don't touch your face. Wear a mask when you can.
great. Wow, that is awesome. There's so many wonderful things you know you mentioned there. And I know, Sandy, um, when you talk about spraying, the one item that I know we uh, want to think about, too, is a couple more measures, maybe specific to the construction site. Um, but I believe we could do that also with the spraying over our tools and making sure we don't share what the water cooler. I know we often talk about that. So making sure that we're careful about that. And um, is there any other suggestions that you would have on the work site for them or on the site or in the office, Dr. Gibney, anything else that you can think of before we go back to our mental health side? So I think, I think that really spot on Bethany about not sharing tools, because as I mentioned, the contact of the virus on a surface can be passed from one. So you hand me a hammer, thank you. I take that hammer and then I go, oh, what am I gonna do next, right? So try not to, if you're gonna, if you need to share a tool, wipe it down. And we do that even with my stethoscope, with, with my pen light, they all get wiped down because I'm not gonna share that with someone before I do that, disinfect that. So that's very important as well. So I think, being cognizant of the ways that this virus spreads um, through contact, through the nose, through the mouth, on your hands, and, and keeping that in mind in your workspace. Um, and if possible, uh, even though you're out in the fresh air, you know, wearing a mask to protect yourself and others uh, by, by having that covered. And I really like the fact that uh, folks actually are reminded not to touch their face because it's covered with a mask. So I kind of prevent myself from contaminating myself without even really knowing I've done that because I've covered the portal of entry of the virus. Um, but that, those, are, those are important features as well. And I know, Bethany, you want to discuss a little bit about what this is doing with um, the wellness and the mental stability oh, absolutely. of folks. Absolutely, because we because, see all that, right? And yeah, you and I see that on the street. Yeah, all the time. And uh, yeah. honestly, this is stressful. It's stressful to us as professionals, as healthcare providers. You're a nurse, I'm a physician. Even for us, constantly being aware of our environment and what we're doing and making sure that everything's done right. But we have, luckily, I'm blessed to have a stable job. But for those, there's, there's uncertainty. You know, there's uncertainty about whether or not, you know, they're going to get infected and where will they go if they get infected. And that's why resources are very helpful because if you, there's some folks that don't want to get tested because they're afraid, what do I do if I'm positive? Like I may lose my job. I, I, I may not have a place to stay. That's where it's very important to involve the healthcare provider. That's why we're a, a, a link for people to let them understand we will give you the support. You will get the medical support and the housing support if necessary. We have even some of our own ambulance drivers that we had to place because they have young children and did not want to go home because they were, you know, they were sick. So, you know, those things are already taken into consideration and have been thought out and thought through. So you're not alone through this. And that's the main thing that people were all going through this together, but there's resources, not only at the hospital, um, but for the Lieutenant Governor's office and the town halls that she's holding as well. And we are out on the street um, doing the testing as well as offering mental health and social service support because we're finding that the people are coming out and they're having a lot of questions. There's a lot of uncertainty. This is a virus we've never dealt with before. People know what the flu lo looks like. They know what that is. They know what it, this is different and it behaves differently. And I think it's that uncertainty and that not knowing um, that's creating a lot of anxiety for folks. And, and even, even the most high functioning people um, are worried. And, and that's why it's helpful. And mentioned today as well, you know, we used to, we would go out in groups and socialize and talk about what's going on and what's stressing us and what's happening. And that resource has been taken away from us a little bit. Um, and so it's really important in the ways that you can still maintaining social distances or for, through things like Zoom and otherwise, to talk about your feelings. Like, I'm scared, I'm worried. You know, what do I do? Um, because we're all having the same feelings. We're all worried about the same feelings and the same things that are, that are happening. And it helps just to verbalize them, talk them through and realize that there's solutions. And, you know, through verbalizing it, we, we can feel better about what we're gonna be faced with and what we're gonna do because we will get through this. Right. 
Yeah, but thank you. That's so much. And I know uh, for the DCA members and all, a lot of good information, we hope, but we really rely on you in the state. You are a backbone of our economy. We need you healthy at the work site, at home, putting those social distancing measures in place, not going to work sick. And if you're not feeling well or feeling your best, even emotionally, 211, help is here, Delaware, all those great resources. And the final thing is I will share with you here, a lot of times when Dr. Gibney and I are out and uh, in the economic lean, we do have available uh, naloxone. Dr. Gibney, do you wanna close out talking a little bit about uh, the naloxone if you would? Uh, and the telehealth, again, there are free services through our bridge clinics and our Jewish Family Service Centers. And we also have available uh, from our Behavioral Health Consortium the ability to get naloxone. Why don't you share us with that and then we'll wrap out this session. Okay. Yep. So, you know, we know that during this very stressful period, we're struggling. People are struggling and sometimes they turn um, to uh, areas of comfort. Um, and some folks in the construction industry, in the healthcare industry, um, in every work, walk of life, um, have have had history with with substances and and we use them as comforts from time to time whether it be food or alcohol um, or uh, others um, and so it, during this stressful time we realize that those um, triggers um, are in place and um, we know that people are struggling with terrible thoughts um, and uh, thoughts of anxiety and suicide and and picking back up perhaps a substance that might have used. Um, and that's why we feel it's very important um, to be at least cognizant and aware that when folks are struggling, you know, that there's opportunities for help. Um, HelpUsHereDelaware.com is, is a source for uh, and link for resources, but we are fortifying our efforts to deliver the reversal agent for opioid overdose, which is naloxone, also known as Narcan, and the lieutenant governor has one of our rescue kits, which every time we go out um, to do our swabbing and our testing, um, we have probably a, a two or 300 doses with us to supply for free. And, in, you know, we encourage you to keep it on the work site. You know, you don't know when this might bubble up and occur. So, you know, we're more than happy to supply your work site with Narcan to have either in your office, in your trailer, or available so someone can quickly run, grab it, and save a life. You have about six minutes from the time of overdose before the brain starts shutting down and not supplying appropriate oxygen um, to the body. So in those six minutes, you could run and get this kit and administer internasal and reverse the effects of an opiate overdose and save a life. So we encourage you to think about that and reach out to the Lieutenant Governor's office um, or help us here, would be able to, we would be able to deliver Narcan to your site or make it available to you um, in these times of stress where folks may reach out for another comfort measure or go back to old habits and ways, which we know, um, obviously it's a very stressful time. So we wanna be there in that regard as well. And I know Bethany wanted to speak about um, a, a topic that's very important to both of us, which is mental health, depression, suicidality, bipolar disorder. And we all have had friends and family that are struggling right now. And this may be a time where those issues become more prevalent. And so don't be afraid to discuss them, to talk about them, to reach out for help because you're not alone in that struggle. Well, thank you for that. And uh, we're not alone. And for those who have family who are at home, uh, elders who are recovering from cancer, have diabetes and other disease, even more reason at the work site to follow these instructions. And so we hope that this has been informative. I'm so appreciative of my good friend, Dr. Sandy Gibney, who's taken time to share with us and the DCA leadership and the team today, some information that we hope that you find useful. Feel free to reach out to our office or you can reach also Dr. Gibney through the Behavioral Health Consortium as chair of our Access and Treatment Committee. And so again, to each and every one of you, continue to have social distancing, wear the mask, call us if you're struggling and uh, do take care. And Dr. Gibney, thank you so much for joining us today.